You may be wondering, is now a good time to start an Airbnb business? Start again, three lifelines, here we go. Is now a good time to start an Airbnb business? Letter A, yes. Letter B, maybe. <laughs> letter C, watch the video till the end. Or letter D, it's too late. I've got three lifelines. 50-50. Okay. Computer, would you take away two wrong answers, please? Leave me with the right answer and one wrong one. D. Can I change it? <laughs> <laughs> C. Have a look at it. C. <laughs> it's the right answer. You got it. <laughs> to be honest, I can't say that it is. In fact, I'd caution folks, especially first time investors, to start short term renting right now. But if you have some experience in real estate investing, have worked with coaches, done research about Airbnb, or do have some cash on hand or accessible financing, then short term renting can still be a very profitable business. If, the big if, you play your cards right. That is amazing. Now, the key to Airbnb investing is having a solid business plan. Having a plan is critical to any business. It's like trying to find your way somewhere without Google Maps or building a house without a blueprint. You're probably not gonna get anything done and it's gonna cost you a lot of money and time. So in this video, we're gonna be covering the basics of creating a Airbnb business plan so you don't have to jump to short term renting with a blindfold on your face. Especially in difficult times like this when Airbnbs have reached saturation and the competition is pretty stiff. You wanna have have a business plan for several reasons. It'll give you a clear vision and action plan for your business. It'll show you achievable goals that you can check periodically to monitor your progress. It'll keep you focused on the necessary steps and prevent you from veering off course. It's something you can show your business partners, investors, or future employees. It'll help you make business growth projections and plans for contingencies. In other words, it gives you a higher chance of success. So all I ask is that you like this video and share it with anybody that's interested in starting a business on Airbnb. Now your Airbnb business plan doesn't have to be lengthy or complicated. You don't need a business attorney. You can just start with a two or three pager and then build on as you go. So this is how you do it. Number one, set your goals. Ask yourself, why do you want to start an Airbnb business in the first place? What is it that motivates you? Do you live in a large city or tourist destination where visitors need a place to lodge? Do you like hospitality and want to share space with them? Or are you an avid traveler just looking to offset your expenses by renting at your home while you're away? Whatever your reason for starting starting your short-term rental business, state them. Then set a goal and vision for what you want to achieve in your business. Maybe you want to be the top Airbnb listing in your neighborhood or particular market. Maybe you want to make X figure income by six, 12 or 18 months down the line. I'm going to be a millionaire. Number two, study the market. Describe the vacation rental landscape in your target area. Is there a strong demand for Airbnbs? Ideally, you'll want a place that has a lot of travelers, a low impact on seasonality and a relaxed short-term rental regulations. Now you want to study the customers. Are they business travelers, couples on honeymoons, families on holidays, traveling nurses looking to rent mid or long term? Find out what products and services are being offered and not being offered. See how they might be able to fit into the market and provide what isn't available yet. You might be able to identify and understand serve demographic and choose to focus on them, making that your target niche. Maybe you live in a college town or a place near a military base. You could cater to parents or just families visiting there. After you've zeroed in on a target, find out other Airbnb properties that are catering to the same demographic. Those listings would be your direct competitors. Study their listings carefully and find out what services that they're providing or not providing and familiarize yourself with their pricing strategy. One of the most popular tools you can use to help you build out your business plan is using a tool like AirDNA, but I strongly recommend not using just one single data source like AirDNA, I recommend if you're going to be making these big decisions on your business, using as many resources and data points as possible. So I'm going to be including a resource in the description of this video that's going to walk you through the exact process that we use in order to get the data that we need. That way you're not just depending on one source and you're able to make an educated decision. Uh, I wanted to tell you that it's been education. Number three, branding your Airbnb. By focusing on a target guest, you can make your property more appealing by providing the exact amenities that they want and delivering a message that speaks specifically to them. You're going to want to come up with unique selling points that will outperform other competitors. This will be your branding. And branding is important because it gives your business a unique identity that's going to resonate with your target audience, making you stand out from everybody else. It could be better pricing, a special feature in your property, or additional services that would make potential guests choose 
you instead of the competition. Does your listing have parking spots, a washer dryer? Then convenience is your selling point. How about a spacious backyard or a chef's kitchen, a pool? Then creature comforts and small luxuries will be the name in your game. Can you offer a guided tour in your area? Then that can definitely set you apart as well. Damn, this house is big. Number four, creating a marketing plan. Think of ways to reach your target customers with your message. Your channel should include traditional and digital methods, handouts, email marketing, social media, local tourist information centers, partnering with local businesses, creating your own website, and of course, utilizing online booking channels like Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, and the like. Number five, decide your operational strategy. Detail the day-to-day -day operations of your Airbnb business, including bookings or calendar management, guest communications, housekeeping, maintenance and accounting. You're going to want to decide on how to plan out and implement these processes. Are you going to be doing them yourself, outsourcing them to a professional property management company or employ a co-host or just a contractor, a virtual assistant, whatever it is, these are all things that you need to consider because that is ultimately going to affect how much you're going to be making and what it is that you're going to need to invest the sweat equity into your business. This is also probably a good place to state your plain legal structure as well. Finding out the pros and cons of forming an LLC, S corporation, sole proprietorship, and then deciding on which one will work best for you. And I definitely recommend checking out the video in the description that talks about the different structures that you can choose for your short-term rental business if you're undecided. If you choose life, choose cake. Number six, financials and pricing. In this section, you're going to want to make a projection of what is going to be the income in your pocket. Take into account your rental income, the expenses, and the profit for maybe the next two years. Things you're also going to want to include is how much you have to pay for taxes, licensing fees, or any incidental fees that might happen. So putting away a small cushion in case something happens, because as we all know, being in this business, there's going to be plenty of stuff that happens at your property due to guests or just wear and tear. Also included in wear and tear is that initial upfront fee. So having to pay for furniture and that initial investment into the property as well as any ongoing maintenance costs, things like cleaning fees and a property manager if you're paying for one. And don't forget to consider how much of the year you want your space or can even have your space open. That'll help you determine how much occupancy you can project as well as how much you'll be making. Talking about occupancy, you should also think about seasonality. Will you charge more during the holidays or special events in your area? Or will you offer a year round discount around Around those times. Maybe your property is located by a place where there's lots of seasonal events or even a sporting thing like the PGA Tour. These types of numbers will be able to help you forecast sales, costs, and cash flow. They'll also give you an idea of how to price things, letting you predict if you can get your desired ROI or return on investment or not with any specific time frame. I know it sounds like a lot trying to think of how can you project out future events that maybe you don't even know or want to keep up to date with. Luckily, there are tools out there called dynamic pricing tools that can automatically adjust the price of your property for you, similar to a hotel or airline. But if you want to know how much you should actually be charging for your property, I do have a video in the description of this one that goes into detail about how to price your property. I'll do that. Finally, it's important to drop a financial growth plan for the next three to five years. You want to make projections for any need to upgrade your amenities, hire more staff, offer new services, or scale up to the next property. And in that case, you might need to explore some financing options. It's also smart to consider both the optimistic and pessimistic scenarios. That way, you can anticipate the outcome of each while you have time to build your credit and prepare, either for life contingencies or for a family, a house, a retirement fund, whatever it is. I do also have an Airbnb pricing calculator, which you can check in the description of this video as well. So as I mentioned before, your Airbnb business plan doesn't have to be long and exhaustive for now. It's exactly as the name suggests, a plan. You'll see once you get started how it may or may not actually be implemented as you go, so that way you can adjust it as the needs arise. It's not set in stone, typically nothing goes according to exact plan, but you should treat it like a living document, evolving and expanding through the years. Make it a point to adjust it yearly, maybe every six months just to keep your business in check. With a basic plan in place, you can now have the direction and confidence you need to start and act on your business goals. And if you want to see how we were able to grow our Airbnb business to over a million dollars a year while having properties remotely across the US. I'm going to be providing a free resource in the description of this video that's going to lay out everything step by step. That way you can get started with your business today. With all that being said, Host Nation, keep on hosting. Yeah.